Welcome today to the wonderful psychotherapist Bronwyn Schweigert. Thank you, Bronwyn, for being here today and bringing an intriguing topic to us today, anger, which we all know well, and what we do with it. So Bronwyn, can you maybe start with sharing in your own words a little bit about who you are, where you are, what you do, and more importantly, why you do this? Yes, thank you, Julie. I would love to. So I am, as you said, a licensed therapist here in California. I'm also, you know, in my 50s. And I actually came to become a therapist later in life. This is my second career. I my first career was in nutrition. And I did that for many years. And then my family, my husband and my daughter, and I gosh, how many years ago now, 14 ish years ago, almost 15 years ago, had to relocate due to the great recession, only an hour and a half away, which, you know, you're in Europe, I'm in California, that doesn't seem very far. But it was really, really, really far for me. And I fell into a very profound depression, to the point where I didn't know I had a depression. I mean, I knew I wasn't functioning and my daughter was little, I would be walking down the street and all of a sudden just vomit involuntarily, driving my car in the freeway, same thing, like involuntary vomiting, not disordered eating, just that's how Mm. severe it was. Wow. I kind of suspected it had something to do with the move, but like I literally couldn't piece that together myself either. So my good friends who live uh, a long way away, they said, you need to get a therapist. And I was like, okay. So I go to a therapist and that doesn't really help. Right. And I'm starting to get like really frustrated and desperate. I go to another therapist. It's no better. In fact, it was probably worse with the second one. I go to a whole series of therapists and the whole time, even though I'm barely able to put thoughts together or function and anyone who's had severe depression can understand The whole time I'm thinking, you know, even though I'm hardly functioning right now, I'm pretty sure I could be a better therapist than these guys. You know, this is kind of bullshit. So I decide I never find a good one, but I did decide to go back to school and get another master's degree in counseling and get a life for myself in this new place and kind of settle in. And that was part of my healing journey for that first depression. Um, However, I did go in and out of depression episodes the next, through that 10 year period, in and out, very severe, profound depressions. But looking back now, now that I'm absolutely no longer depressed, I see how every single one of those episodes was suppressed anger, every single one, yes. And I also see with my clients, anxiety is absolutely suppressed anger panic attacks. When I, someone tells me, oh, I had a panic attack. I said, I say, who are you angry at? Mania. I have one client who had psychosis for many years of her life. It was all suppressed anger. I mean, everything as well as like compulsions, like hoarding is suppressed anger, disordered eating, which is a type of self-harm, all self-harm, all disordered eating is suppressed anger. Addictions are ways to numb our suppressed anger. So I really see that now. And I really want to help other people. One, bypass therapy if you can. If you can't find a good one, you know, figure it out on your own. And also help other therapists like myself when I was starting. I didn't know what I was doing. And it took me a while to get where I am now. And I want to help other therapists because a lot of us, we get all this training, but like, it's not helpful and it doesn't work. And it stays sometimes a little bit too academic, right? A little bit too, rather than what you're really feeling. I mean, that that is a, an amazing way to start this talk, Bronwyn. And as always, I, I always love that when we've taken something which has affected us badly and we decided to contribute by, you know, being there for other people who didn't get what we would have wished that we got. And I mean, your story is inspiring anyway in itself for having had you know, the courage to 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 change, to start again. I mean, it's a, it's a long period of studies as well. I mean, you had to do a lot of work. And I mean, that in itself is inspiring that you found something else, something which you were totally passionate about and that you knew you could deliver a better job. So thank mm-hmm. you already for that. Now, I mean, 
it's a very novel approach or something that you say, because of course we all know anger and we all, I guess we're brought up to think that it's a, a sign of weakness to show anger, that we should be controlling ourselves, especially as girls. I think that we're taught that you don't lash out in anger because that's not what, and that anger is a bad thing. So indeed we suppress it or in what you've just said made so much sense to me that we don't recognize that so many of those things which afflict us you know whether we're talking about very serious things like psychosis and all of that or whether we are talking about just binge eating which is actually the episode which went out today Mm. I've always thought there is something in there because then I will binge eat even more because I'm angry at myself for the one half you know mouthful of biscuit that I first took to start with so I mean anger so you've really specialized in anger right Yeah. And, you know, along those lines, I also say I specialize in relationships because that's how we have the suppressed anger. Let's just distinguish though. So we all get angry. You know, if you're, if you drive, if you drive a vehicle, you get angry. Like people cut you off. People show their worst selves in the car. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people only feel powerful when they're driving and they, they need to feel powerful. And so they act like complete assholes on the road. So we all get angry, but that's not what causes all these things. Some stranger cutting us off is not really a betrayal. Betrayal is what causes the sickness. It's usually a parent or a spouse. It's someone very close to us. In my case, the second episode of depression that was very severe for me, I'll I'll share a little bit about that a person in authority, like a boss or a supervisor. So the second episode for me, for example, was I angry at the therapists who were failing me? Sure. Did I feel betrayed by them? Not really, not really. Cause I didn't expect, we didn't have like a relationship and I didn't really expect a whole lot. So it wasn't a betrayal. It was just like annoying and frustrating um, and disappointing. But I, my second episode of anger when I was still in grad school i started out as an intern brand new intern and i was at a center a counseling center and my supervisor so you're really dependent on your supervisor to kind of you know just teach you the tools of the trade and you meet with the supervisor and he the the man i had he was also the clinic director so i really trusted him he's obviously a licensed therapist so i'm trusting him to do good by me, to have my best interests at heart. So he tell, I learned that I have my first client like all lined up and, and I learned, okay, so you have your first client. Are you excited? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure. I, of course I was nervous. And then he said, yeah, it's a couple. And if you know anything about therapy and you could probably just intuitively know, like a couple is a whole different different ball ball game. You need to have a lot of years of experience and specific yeah. training to do justice with a couple. It's not, it's next level. And mm-hmm. this is my first client. I'm so still felt betrayed student. by him. Yeah. He put you in a situation where, you know, he doomed you almost from the start. Right? Well, and then I said, I said, I, I don't think I can do that. And he goes, yeah, you can. Mm-hmm. That was his response. Right. Yeah. You can. And so would you say that the first bout was then that you felt betrayed by your husband, that he uprooted you, that he betrayed your love by shattering the world that you knew and and taking you somewhere else because he needed to go there? I think, no, even, I think more it was once we moved, I didn't realize how alone I would feel. I felt Mm -hmm. so alone. (laughs) And then when I was feeling that level of, so, so depression, anxiety, all these things are our secondary feelings to our primary feelings. My primary feeling there with the move was just absolute utter loneliness. And my husband wasn't meeting me there. I think lots of people listening to this are going to relate to that where for the great majority we're expats. So, I mean, I've just had my 25th move 
and it does get better of course you do you do learn that you'll survive you do have more self confidence you do rapidly go through the motions but i'll never forget those first few times and the number of people around me who you know go to pieces even going to the bakers in a different language often as well different culture mm, different language wow. and just everything that it brings up and that feeling of loneliness my my first posting with my husband then was to to cameroon and i had a 3 month old baby i have never ever felt more alone in my life because there was no support no family no and he was busy right he was busy he launched straight into his job he was gone the whole time but anyway we're not going to get into that now but what i love about all that you're saying is this is this so this is anger right but that we're we're suppressing it we're repressing it or we're pushing it down now why do we do that yeah so <clears throat> the first time with my husband when i felt so alone and he wasn't helping he was just kind of looking at me like why aren't you doing better yeah, get on with yeah, exactly. yeah yeah and i'm kind of and looking back i'm like well where the hell were you like, why didn't you help me do better? But at the time, I didn't see that going down. I didn't have that awareness of, I expected him to look at, you know, all he needed to do is look at me and say, Bronwyn, I see how hard this is for you. Yeah. I see how alone you feel. And tell me what you need from me right now. Like, what? Nice. how can I make this better? If he had just said that. Yeah, that would have yeah, like yeah. eliminated so much of it. So, so it's acknowledging what we're going through, whatever that is. So that was, yeah, in that case, with the second time with the, the supervisor slash, his name was Dan. And if I had just felt entitled to say, oh, hell no, you don't get to give me a couple because you, I think what was happening is a couple wanted someone who charged the least amount, which the, the new intern starting out, you know, through the clinic have the lowest fee. And I think he just wanted to keep his business and use me as a way, you know, to keep this couple, this client. If I had the wherewithal back then, and I should have, I was like 40 years old. I should have just looked at him and go, oh no, 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 no. If you proceed to try to push this on me, I'm going to find another internship. Thank you very much. Right. But I didn't have that in me. I didn't feel entitled. It's too close to as just, well, maybe. Right. Yeah. I, to just have a boundary with him and to be assertive. Right. So we all have anger, right? It's a reaction that we have to things, right? So things are not uh, aligned with our values. If we feel betrayed, if we feel let down, etc. So, I mean, it, it comes in different shapes and forms. It comes in different uh, volumes, let's say, and it then rules our life in a different way. So what? I mean, first of all, so we need to recognize it because you were also saying that all those things that you were talking about, you know, all these various, that they're all anger. So how do we, first of all, get to recognizing when, for example, compulsive eating is anger against something, right? just to take a simple example or choose another one. But how do we get to know what's the difference? I think, first of all, I think at the very beginning, we need to know that anger is not shameful kind of like you were right. bringing up like we're taught growing up don't be angry that's not nice be a nice girl be a good girl whatever um we needed to go you know what anger isn't shameful it's not bad it's just a natural consequence of when the real deviates from the ideal that's all it is Ooh, that's and in this yeah on this planet that's going to happen 23 hours a day, yeah. you know, for most of us. So that's going to happen all the time. Of course, yeah. we're going to be angry when things are not ideal. Of course, right. things are not ideal most of the time. So there's nothing shameful about having that response. So we need to see that that's not bad. That's normal right. and natural. And it's also like a warning light on the dashboard of our car saying, hey, check the Something's engine. Going Something's going on here. Something's going wrong. Do we feel ashamed to, of that light? Do we say, oh my God, I, no. I don't want to look at that light. No, no, that light's We're bad. actually grateful no. for the signal, right? Exactly. Because so what you were not, saying as well was that yes. if we don't recognize it, that's when, yes. it, you know, you were talking about all these, you know, illnesses and, and problems that we get because we're not yeah. recognizing it. So we're pushing it underneath or yeah. we're pretending it hasn't happened or... Because, I mean, the problem with anger, of course, I guess why we often feel ashamed of it is often it makes us, well, it doesn't make us, but it sort of seems to allow us to say things which we, 
you know, which might not be aligned with who we truly are or might not even be things that we think or there might be things that we think, but, you know, we could have maybe discussed that in a better way than just lashing out in anger. I used to have serious anger problems. I've come a lot further with age for that. I'm grateful with the 50 plus taking myself out the equation. But I used to always say to my children, to, to the, the ex-husband, if I'm angry, look for the pain. I only lash out when I'm hurt for, for whatever it is, something that they haven't seen as a pain, but it has hurt me for somebody very loud. I'm actually very sensitive. So I would always say to them, look for the pain. And when the real deviates from the ideal, that is yeah. so bang on. So, so this happens. So, and this happens to us a lot in different degrees, you know, just tiny little expectations about who comes home at what time mm. and what they're going to do. I mean, it can be huge things, but it can also be small things. Sure. So first of all, it's then acknowledging that there is a, an undercurrent of anger. Acknowledging there's anger, that that is totally okay. Of course, yeah. there's anger. That doesn't, there's no, we don't judge our feelings. We can judge yeah. our actions. We can judge our words, but we can't judge feelings. Feelings are just a natural consequence of when the real deviates from the ideal. That's That's fine. So it's really about our relationship with our anger. Everyone right. has a relationship with their anger. And it's about moving towards one of health, a healthy relationship with anger, which starts with saying, you know, if I had said to myself with that clinic director, Bronwyn, you are entitled to be angry because this is wrong. Then I would have said, okay, clinic director, like I'm moving on. Mm. If you're not accommodating and respecting me, I'm out of here. Yeah. That so so I think what you're getting at though is a lot of us are afraid of anger and I liken anger to fire. Fire can burn down a house when it's out of control. It can be so destructive. And a lot of us only view anger like that. Maybe we had a parent who blew up. Maybe we, mm -hmm. you know, experienced someone like that. But when fire is contained in a fireplace, and this is something I think in as westerners we don't get anymore because throughout all of human history, you couldn't live without a fire pit or a exactly. hearth or a fireplace. You needed it not just for heat, but light and also sterilization of like yeah. instruments. And so, cooking. And, you know, you couldn't eat, you know, can't you eat raw meat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when fire is contained in a fireplace, it is necessary to keep the whole house warm and lit. Okay. So let's look at anger. Yes, it can be destructive when it's out of control, but what we can have it contained and have a healthy relationship with it where it we can channel it in a healthy way through right. assertive speed, assertiveness and boundaries. And I think a lot of us confuse assertiveness with aggressiveness. Yes. It's not the same, right? So yes. if I had just said to my clinic director, if I had called him a name and, you know, sworn, that would be aggressive. But I, I don't agree. need to do that. I just need to say, hey, this isn't okay. This right. isn't okay. That's right. it. That's right. not aggressive. That's not out of control. That's just plain assertive. But this is so clever because basically, so what you're saying is that anger is there for a reason, right? That there is something has happened. So... It's like that you said, the, the, the light on the dashboard, right? It's not good. It's not bad. It's actually alerting you to a possible problem. So at least you're aware early that there might be something under here, which could do well with being looked at before it festers and becomes worse and worse and worse, or your car breaks down or you have an accident mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. So yeah. it's saying, it's saying acknowledge it and, and then also saying, use it to find out what that message is and to then see how you because it's there's, there's a problem then that means there's an issue there's something which has deviated from what you'd hoped mm -hmm. and that you can then present to the other person as you said with assertiveness which just means owning it and and saying it in a certain way and not with aggressiveness which is what we tend to do indeed anger rare 
You know, I mean, that, that's, that's exactly what I would do. There'd be no seconds to think. It would be like an, a reaction. And that's when I said, no, you know, that is not who I am. And I'm behaving in a way which is not in line with who I believe or that I truly am underneath. So how do I create some space, you know, like Kovi said, between stimulus and response? And in <laughs> that hole between the two is where your true self lies. But so how do we do that? Do people come to you with anger issues? No, people come to me with depression, anxiety, you know, all those other things. Right. Relationship problems. Hmm, yes. That sounds like anger. <laughs> so, but again, it's betrayal. It's not just anger. It's, yeah. it's betrayal. Yeah. So I want to say, yeah. So the anger, instead of pathologizing anger, which is what we tend to do, we pathologize pathologize it let's see it as a what do you mean by pathologize i always like this to be uh, you know low-key pathologizes we see it as, a, as an illness or yeah okay you, okay so let's say someone says oh like i have had a client come to me and say i have anger issues i'm an angry person i said that's like saying oh, yes. i'm a breathing person right of yeah. course you're an angry per who doesn't have anger let's see if you actually have issues and then she starts telling me i'm like no, actually, your anger sounds very, very legitimate in all of these examples. It sounds like the problem is actually your husband. And she was probably completely, yeah, no, no, it's me. I'm an angry person. No, but they're quite right. And I mean, that's that's part of the relationship and the discussion, isn't it? That the husband might not have seen how he had betrayed her. But if she doesn't explain to him how she sees things, then, you know, not, not everybody has the same amount of emotional intelligence to, to understand that it comes from a position of betrayal and then of pain, which is being expressed as anger and not as its true self. So you're saying we need to express it for what it is and not hide it or disguise it or suppress it because it will make us ill. It will make us ill and it will seep out in the worst ways to affect mm -hmm. the people who least deserve it, like our children. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And we are very good or ourselves, right? I think we often as women. Yeah, or absolutely ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it won't go away. So, right. yeah. So one thing I wanted to say along with that is what I, my job as a therapist or what a good therapist job is, is to just be a mirror, right. to just reflect the truth back to people so when I, I needed someone, when I was starting out as an intern to say, Bronwyn, it's not okay that your supervisor is trying to put a couple on you as your first client. If I had had a therapist who could just be a mirror and say, that's, that's actually not okay. Yeah. Your anger is justified. That's what we need from each other is right. a real reflection that validates ourselves. So we don't right. second guess ourselves now. My goal as a therapist is to help my clients get to a place where they can actually be a mirror for themselves. Right. When we can be a mirror and reflect the truth back to ourselves, yeah. we are healing our relationship with ourselves. We are healing. We, we no longer betray ourselves. We no yeah. longer second guess ourselves. We no longer abandon ourselves to please and that's we women are very good at that right so yeah so it is making you and i mean this is a fabulous after 50 audience so i love what i'm hearing because though we may learn with age to maybe control it a little better i don't think that we really look like you've said that, that we mirror to ourselves okay what's going on here you know, what is it that I'm feeling? What is the, the real issue here that you're expressing? And how can I communicate that with the boss or the husband or the child or the whoever has, you know, has been the starting point or whatever, rather than whoever was the starting point and actually solve it that way. And it must be tremendously liberating because I think I think lots of us fear our anger as well. Right. That we're sort of we're walking around. We're not we're not being our own best friend because by by owning and coming up for ourselves, you know, like you said, you know, healing, but through stopping betraying ourselves, you know, by, okay, no, it's not me and it's me, the problem. And, oh, no, I said that again. And I shouldn't, is to really stop and, and look at what's going on. So, okay, but we're almost at the end. And of course, not everybody can go to a, to a psychotherapist like you. And of course, there are different degrees of anger. But if I were to ask you for just 
a few tips on what we can already do to start developing that ability to to be that mirror for ourselves what would you suggest yeah so i would suggest starting with healing your relationship to your anger knowing that it is valid so acknowledging it saying okay i hear you and, and what you want to say to me sort of thing yeah trusting yourself just starting with trusting yourself kind of catching yourself and going wait everything in me wants to pretend like i'm not angry right now to maintain this relationship but in doing so i'm actually betraying myself and i'm abandoning myself and and really kind of seeing it for what it really is yeah 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 so i'm a big like i work with people and their inner child so and and so i'll say you know what is little julie feeling right yeah. now and what does right. she need from you it sounds like she needs you to validate her feelings, to recognize her feelings, to validate them, and to protect her and to advocate for her. Yeah, because that, that anger was probably a strategy that we picked up in childhood when there was nobody there for little Julie. And I thought, okay, well, this is the strategy I'm going to use. I'm going to get angry and yell and have a tantrum or whatsoever. And you can then help that little girl understand what to do better so then exactly so uh, listen to the inner child and see how you can help it and then i guess the third one is to actually express then to the other party you know knowing that you know there's usually somebody or something else which is in the equation we rarely get angry just by ourselves though we do actually make our own selves angry but that's maybe a different you know when we're we feel that we have betrayed ourselves i mean i think that is something mm -hmm. I think that yeah. sort of anger is something that I almost have more now with myself than I do with external parties. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So recognizing that betrayal of our young selves and saying, you know what, this is, this is what I have my clients say. So, you know, can you let little Julie know that you're sorry you have abandoned her that and that you're health, yeah. willing to make it up to her and right. that, you're willing to earn back her trust and it might take a while, but you will advocate for her from here on out and do right by her. Right. And tell her that you'll stand up for her and express what was going on then. Right. These are very powerful words, Bronwyn. Thank you very much for bringing up this topic. And I mean, I, I do believe it's it's time for us all to, to really look at it in that way. To be honest, it's for me a, quite a novel way of, of, of looking at it. And I thank you for having, managed to take what happened to you and have crystallized this in such a clear way that we can heal ourselves and that we can find a healthy way of, of containing, like you said, that anger and that we welcome that anger because it is a sign that something needs to be looked at. So yeah. thank you very, very much, Bronwyn, for the rest of you listening. Yeah. I hope you've taken notes and I hope we'll be gentle and, and listen to the signs and at least contain it and use that anger for the better good of yourself and those who are around you yeah. so thank you very and much yeah you're welcome ahead. can i share my podcast yes please do please do okay yeah so you can hear more at uh, my podcast which is called angry at the right things angry at the right things that sounds and then we can that's literally the title they can find it I'll put, I think yeah. I've got the link eh, for in the show notes. I'll make sure that goes in angry at the right things. Bang on Bronwyn. Thank you very, very much. And I suggest we all listen in to that, right? <laughs> all the best. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.